Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about diffusion of gases. Okay, so diffusion of gases where at the level of alveoli. Okay, see, we all know that in the alveolus there is oxygen. Now, this oxygen should have to go into the blood vessels for the purpose of oxygenation. So, oxygen should have to diffuse from the alveolus into the blood vessel. At the same time, whatever the carbon dioxide which is produced at the level of tissues, that carbon dioxide which is there in the deoxygenated blood, that carbon dioxide need to be again diffused back into the alveoli and from here it have to go into the environment. Now what I am saying is, here there should be diffusion of gases, that is the diffusion of oxygen as well as carbon dioxide at the level of alveolus. Now here, in between the alveolus and the pulmonary capillaries, there is a membrane present. This membrane is called as alveolar basement membrane. Okay, alveolar basement membrane, or it's it's also called as respiratory membrane okay now important mcq which you need to know is this diffusion of gases is it an active process or passive process definitely this is an example of passive process okay so diffusion itself is passive okay passive diffusion or we can say it's a simple diffusion why it is simple diffusion? Why? Because oxygen is moving from high concentration or high partial pressures to low partial pressure in the deoxygenated blood. Here, in the deoxygenated blood, the partial pressure of oxygen is less. In the alveoli, the partial pressure of oxygen is more. So, oxygen is moving from high partial pressure to low partial pressure. So, this is simple diffusion which is based on gradient. Okay, gradient or the difference. In the same way, the carbon dioxide in the deoxygenated blood is having high partial pressure and the carbon dioxide in the alveolus is very much zero, almost zero. So, carbon dioxide is moving from high partial pressure to the low partial pressure. So, remember one point, exchange of gases is all the time simple diffusion. For the exchange of gases, there is no need of any ATP, there is no need of any transporter or channel required. Okay. After this, Let's talk about fixilla. Okay. What exactly is this fixilla? Now, fixilla state says diffusion is dependent on or diffusion is a directly proportional to concentration gradient. Okay, concentration gradient and surface area but diffusion is indirectly proportional to thickness thickness of what thickness of membrane which membrane here alveolar basement membrane or the respiratory membrane guys it's very simple diffusion is directly proportional to concentration gradient it means if there is a more pressure difference if there is more partial pressure difference more easily diffusion will happen, more fastly diffusion will happen. If the surface area is more, okay, if here there is more surface area at the level of alveolus, if the alveolar surface area is more, more diffusion of gases will happen, very simple. But here if thickness, if this membrane thickness, if the membrane thickness is more, if this membrane got fibrotic, then what happened? Now it will, it will act as an impedance factor for the diffusion of gases. So, thickness is indirectly proportional to diffusion of gases. This is fixed law. Now, after seeing this, let us talk about some abnormalities. Okay. Abnormalities 
of diffusion now first of all let's take an example of a condition called as alpha 1 anti trypsin deficiency now we all know that this deficiency of alpha 1 antitrypsin will cause a disease called as emphysema. Okay, now what happens in emphysema? In emphysema, what happened to diffusion of gases? Diffusion of gases increases or diffusion of gases decreases? Now we will see. Guys, let me show you here a normal alveoli. Usually, a normal alveoli will be something like this. It just looks like a cluster of grapes. Okay, with lot of uh, this surface area, with lot of surface area. Now, a normal alveoli looks like this. But if you see, in emphysema, because of the deficiency of that alpha-1 antitrypsin, because of the excessive activity of the proteases, okay, in detail about emphysema, you will study in your pathology, in that second year. What I am saying is, because of the deficiency of this enzyme, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency enzyme, the proteases in the lungs are overactivated. If proteases in the lungs, if they are overactivated, now proteases, they will destroy, okay, the elastin fibers and also they will destroy the alveoli. So, at the end of the day, your alveolus will become something like this, a big alveoli, a big alveoli with loss of this extra membrane. See here, you are having extra membrane, all this is the extra membrane, which is helping in the process of diffusion. But here, you are having one single large alveoli where the surface area, okay, is decreased. Surface area is decreased. Now, based on the fixed law, you just tell me, guys, what happens to diffusion if surface area is decreased? If surface area is decreased, automatically diffusion also decreases. So, in emphysema, what happened to diffusion? What happened to diffusion of gases? Diffusion of gases is affected. There will be decreased diffusion. Okay. Now, after this, let's talk about one more abnormality. Example number 2, that is pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis. Now, in this pulmonary fibrosis, what's happening? See, here I am showing you a healthy normal alveoli. There is no problem with the alveoli. And here, this is the pulmonary capillary which is bringing the blood, deoxygenated blood. Now, the problem here is the basement membrane, alveolar basement membrane, it got too much thickened. It got too much thickened. Why it got too much thickened? Because of the deposition of extra fibers, okay, fibrotic material is getting deposited over here, okay, that is called as pulmonary fibrosis. There is deposition of fibers, okay. Now, what happens? In the condition of pulmonary fibrosis, there is thickening of the alveolar basement membrane or the respiratory membrane. Now, how it affects? Increase thickness of alveolar basement membrane. So, how it affects diffusion? So, diffusion is going to be decreased. So, now just tell me the two important pathological conditions where the diffusion of gases decreases in the alveoli. The two important examples are one is emphysema diffusion decreases because of decrease in the respiratory surface area and in the second condition that is pulmonary fibrosis, diffusion decreases because of the thickening of the alveolar basement membrane because of that extra fibrotic material deposition. Now, here I just want to integrate with the pharma. Okay, pharma link. Now, what are the drugs? If you use certain drugs, that will cause pulmonary fibrosis. So, drugs causing pulmonary fibrosis. What are those drugs? Guys, first drug A, B, C. A for amiodarone. 
okay b for bu sulfan and c for car mustin cyclo phosphamide and there is one more drug that is metho rexate okay so these drugs amiodarone busulfan carmustin cyclophosphamide and methotrexate are the drugs which are associated with the side effect of pulmonary fibrosis which will decrease the diffusion of gases now after this let's talk about diffusion measurement diffusion of gases measurement now how can we measure the diffusion diffusion is measured by the measurement is done by a study called as dlco diffusion in lung measured with the help of carbon monoxide dlco diffusion in lung measured with the help of carbon monoxide that is called as dlco now here see we are using carbon monoxide for the diffusion of gases we are not using carbon dioxide or oxygen why we are using carbon monoxide is because carbon monoxide is having more affinity it's having 210 times more affinity affinity to hemoglobin so as it's having more affinity when compared to oxygen it's having 210 times more affinity for the hemoglobin so we are using carbon monoxide for the studying of this diffusion at the level of alveolus normal dlco is normal diffusion value okay normal dlco value for the carbon monoxide is 25 ml per minute okay per mm hg pressure at this pressure 25 ml of carbon monoxide is diffused normally okay now let's see what are the abnormalities where dlco is increased and the conditions where diffusion is going to be decreased okay what are the conditions where diffusion in the lung will increase and what are the conditions where diffusion in the lungs will decrease for the carbon monoxide now first let's talk about the conditions where dlco is increased there are two important conditions now if the person is suffering with a condition called as polycythemia now what exactly is polycythemia polycythemia is a condition where there is excessive amount of red blood cells are there in the blood now imagine there is more red blood cells there are more red blood cells which are present in the blood so more rbcs are going to the lungs if more rbcs are going to the lungs more hemoglobin is going to the lungs if more hemoglobin is going to lung to the lungs it will easily catch up the carbon monoxide present in the lungs it will easily take up the carbon monoxide right so more number of vehicles are going just imagine the rbcs as a vehicles so more number of vehicles are going to the lungs so can they can easily pick up all the carbon monoxide so very fastly carbon monoxide is getting diffused into the blood okay polycythemia and second condition is exercise okay now even in exercise the amount of blood going to the lungs for the purpose of oxygenation is more okay so in during exercise there will be hyperdynamic circulation right okay heart is beating more number of times the cardiac output increases the amount of blood going to the lungs increases so if more blood is going to the lungs readily all that carbon monoxide whatever you are giving that will be easily taken up so dlco increases now let's talk about what are the conditions where dlco are decreased the three important conditions which you need to know are first one anemia just opposite to polycythemia if more rbcs are going means more diffusion will happen if less rbcs are going means less diffusion will happen so anemia second condition is emphysema i think there is no need for the further explanation in emphysema i have taught you what happened to the surface area surface area decreases so automatically diffusion decreases so diffusion for oxygen decreases diffusion for carbon monoxide carbon dioxide diffusion for every gas decreases why because the amount of membrane 
the amount of that respiratory membrane which is helping in the exchange of gases is affected in the condition of emphysema because of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And the third condition is pulmonary fibrosis. Okay, in pulmonary fibrosis, the thickness of the membrane increases, so automatically diffusion of gases decreases. Okay. Now, with this, we have discussed all the important points regarding diffusion of gases. Okay, diffusion of gases and the measurement of diffusion of gases with the help of DLCO and also we have dis uh, discussed one important law that is fixed law for the diffusion of gases. Hope the video is helpful. In the next video, let us continue with the topic of transport of gases in the blood. How oxygen is going to the tissues and how carbon dioxide from the tissues is getting back to the lungs that we will discuss in the next video. Thank you.